motion be heard will be called in the following order. So first, minutes for approval from the March 29 minutes. I got a chance to approve is accepted. Do have a second? So moved. Any further discussion? No. In favor? Aye. 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 Any abstaining? Okay. That's your Thank you, John, for those, Joanne. Yeah. Here we have meeting mail. Um, Eversource Energy to selectively apply herbicides along um, power line rights of way. This is pretty standard, but you know it's good of them to noti notify us. And I'll read a little bit of it. Um, dear municipal official, this letter is to inform you that Eversource Energy Eastern Mass intends to selectively apply herbicides in 2023 along the power line rights of way that pass through your municipality. This treatment is conducted as a component of an integrated vegetation management program <coughs> that uses the appropriate mechanical and or herbicide treatments to control vegetation in order to encourage the growth of healthy early successional ecological communities that benefit wildlife while allowing for the safe delivery of electricity to our customers and their five-year vegetative management plan is posted on several websites. One is a mass.gov site and the other one is eversource.com. So if anybody's interested in those, that's where you would find those. Any questions, comments about that? And the one other letter. Okay, one other letter. Thanks for that. It's anonymous, but it's all Yeah. Yeah, it's anonymous. That's um, weird. Oh. I think it is. So I, I will read it, though. So it's uh, to hear who it may concern as I drive by, I guess that's 118 Porter Street. It looks like to me. Uh, the residential house, little lot by the wetlands is being rented out. The people renting it cut down trees in the wetlands and filled the lot in, made it twice the size and paid. They have five boats there, one truck, one new shed built, and a storage trailer moved on lot. I don't recall a property or any property on that street to be commercial. This issue needs to be addressed immediately. Now they're in the wetlands once again. Oh, in the wetlands again and cutting more trees down to possibly make a lot bigger. Please investigate to address. Not signed. So Tried to go back today, but got tied up. I think this is the site that we did the site visit across from the fellow with the <coughs> ducks and geese and the stream there. Okay. And um, who was the engineer? Was it? I think it was Rick Sharon. Yeah, I think it was Rick Sharon was the, was the engineer there. Mm -hmm. Maybe this fellow doesn't understand there's been approval or the homeowner got carried away. So we'll we'll check it out next week. Okay. Any other meeting mail we should know about? No. Okay. <clears throat> uh, on to old business. Certificate of Compliance, Dean J. Francois, 293 Perry Hill Road. File number is SE001-0452. A certificate of compliance was filed by Dean J. Francois for property located at 293 Perry Hill Road, Map 8, Lot 25B. The applicant placed a two-bedroom trailer on a foundation and installed a septic system private well, drive-in utilities with filling and grading, as built provided by GAF Engineering Incorporated dated March 14 of 2023. So we've discussed this in the past. He did a site visit. He did a site visit. There was some defect or something wrong. The yeah, the question we had was was two. Well, there was a couple of things that had been like gutters and some more items tossed into the area be behind the lot, and the grading didn't. It was kind of lumpy and not quite right. Is, am I remember right. correctly? Yes. So. A question about that, and I don't know if anybody's here about that property, that project that could speak to it. <clears throat> I, would, I would just, yeah. at this point, deny it, and they can refile. This is the third time it's been on yeah. the agenda, and no one's coming. And no answer one's coming. Right. Yeah, it would be nice to have the questions answered. You know, or just clean up the little bits of stuff that we want cleaned up. Well, it's important that it gets corrected because he's selling it to somebody. Yeah. It's for sale. Mm -hmm. So if someone looks at the registry of deeds filings and sees that there was work that was authorized and thinks they're buying something that all that work was done, mm -hmm. and then maybe finds out that it, the COC wasn't granted and, and they're going to be responsible for that work, mm -hmm. we're better off just yeah. denying it for lack of information. Yep. I'm okay with that. So you want to make, make that motion? Motion to deny the certificate of compliance. For more information. 
or do we for lack, lack of other information? information. <coughs> we have a second. Second. Any further discussion? In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Okay, that's unanimous. And um, we certainly put it on the agenda for the next meeting if they want to refile and you can refile come, and in, and come in and answer, answer jump the questions. Yep. Yeah. And certainly if you, you know, an answer the questions and invite us back out for another site visit and we can do that and see if those things have been cleaned up. And, I thought that Bill Madden was representing him, but yeah, I, I contacted was. Bill and Bill hadn't heard from him. Yeah, okay. It was, yeah. 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 It was filed on March 14th. And yeah. 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 Okay. Kind of went dormant. Yeah, they were fine. Okay. Uh, new business. So this is an order of conditions extension for Mendel Road at Cushnet Solar 1, LLC, care of New Leaf Energy, 251 Mendel Road, map not line, lots, sorry, map, Nine lots 28, 29, and 31 are the file number is SE001 0547. A request for an extension to an existing order of conditions that's file number SE001 0547 for property located at 251 Mendel Road. The applicant proposes the construction of a 4,995 kilowatt alternating current solar energy generating facility off Mendel Road. Gravel access driveway will lead to an 18 and a half acre facility surrounded by a seven foot high perimeter fence within the 100 foot buffer zone to a bordering vegetated wetland. The applicant is represented by Brandon Smith of New Leaf Energy. Plan name is notice of intent 251 Mendel Road, solar photovoltaic and energy storage system dated May 21 of 2020. Somebody here for that project? From well, so, so Brandon did make it to the site visit. Okay. Um, and he explained to us that the reason they haven't done any construction or started any construction is because they don't have a connection with the power company. Mm -hmm. And that the power company, because they've had so many applications um, from solar providers come online, rather than look at them individually, they've put them into a pool. And and I don't know if it's become a law or, or a pay-to-play um, situation to be in the pool, but they don't even know if they're going to get a, um, a connection. This is purely a, a spec um, project. Looking at the Weapons Protection Act, uh, you know, if nothing has been done and it doesn't appear anything's going to be done, um, we really shouldn't renew the, the notice of intent. When they get a connection and when they know they have a project, they should come back. Because what's happening is these sites are delineated years ago. Mm -hmm. And things change when, when nothing is going on there. And um, as we found at the uh, um, Cushing Lane project, the commission identified a wetland in the middle of the site that hadn't been uh, mapped. And the um, solar company proposing that project came back and said, well, if it was missed, and, and you folks missed it, you, you can't try and protect that wetland. It's exempt. And as you know, I, I kind of dug in on that. And um, there's been no more action there, and I don't know if they're you know, going <coughs> to concede that, that the wetland's there, mm -hmm. as well as an intermittent stream that's being called a drainage ditch. So <coughs> the, the terms of engagement have changed with the town. We're much more focused on solar fields after what happened at 550 Main. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it'd be prudent um, for the town to not renew um, this notice of intent so that when it comes back, we get a fresh look at it mm -hmm. with all of the departments and all of that participation um, doing this in, in unison so that nothing gets missed. Okay. Now, some of you went to the site visit. Any thoughts or comments on the visit there? No, so not the same site that it was the yeah, first time I ever went there. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> right. It's three houses it's in three houses. houses. So that's my thing. This has a special permit, right? Through the planning board or, or no? That I don't know. Oh, no. There, there hasn't been a... Uh, yes, it does. It does have because I believe that he mentioned to us at the site visit that they're on the planning board tomorrow night for a permit extension. Right. So I think my personal opinion is I think we should kind of be locked up with planning board on these things, whether the <coughs> they're not going to issue the special permit or extend it, then so no matter what we say, it doesn't really... And, un and unfortunately, we're, we seem to be going first here. But there's a lot of them that are up for the 
Mm -hmm. Some are June 3rd, some are June 6th, some are in July. Yeah. And then my other thing is, if we do off, um, issue an extension, it wouldn't be notifying the, the new abutters, it's three new abutters. Correct. There. So, Correct. even if, it, you know, a condition of the extension, I would like, if we did issue it, would be to notify those abutters so they can be in a, on the whole process as well. You know what I mean? So not just continue this and have them do a new publication. I, I just got questions for them, yeah, and kind of way like to know what planning's going to say. That those would be my questions. And they, there were runoff issues a couple of years ago, if you remember, from the butters on the I north side of the project. I, I do. Yeah, they were never addressed really. So those three houses went up without any. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about on the north side of the project, houses that were there existing. But even that, those houses yeah. didn't have stormwater or anything no. either, right? right? They went up individually up. or whatever. Yeah, it's the same builder, same three houses, but the building inspector issued the permits. And oh. Cool. I, I, I did do a roof drain inspection on one of the houses, if that was any consolation, but mm. that, that's as far as it got. Well, we were the other person in the last house was dumping his stuff in the woods. <laughs> I mean, it was... So. <coughs> so those are my comments. I mean, if you, if you don't renew it, you can waive the fee next time when they reapply if you want to make it, you know, that much easier. But mm. after this much time, um, I'd like to see a better weapons delineation now that we're requiring the field data notes. Mm -hmm. There haven't been any infiltration tests out there, which is what you know bit us in the in the butt at Wing Lane. Um, there's, there's a lot of new a new focus from the town on making sure we check off all the, the boxes. I think I'd like to make a motion if we rescind their permit. Do we not, not, to not renew it. No. Not, not issue an annual 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 right. Not, okay. not issue a okay. continuance. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Do we have any further discussion? Um, anybody in the audience? Yeah, I should. Um, I think I did ask for anybody here to speak on this specific project. That's a resounding no. <laughs> um, in that case, I'm all in favor of the motion to not renew tonight. Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Okay, that's unanimous. Good. Um, motion to open a public hearing. So moved. And a second? Second. In favor? Aye. A public hearing in NOI Sankarfa Park Drive, LLC, Lambert Street, Map 17, Lot 13, the file number is SC00-0582. <laughs> Notice of intent was filed by Sankarfa Park Drive <coughs> LLC for property located at Lambert Street, Map 17, Lot 13. The applicant proposes development of an access road with proposed wetland impact and associated replication to access the Park Drive solar project. This is an alternative access road. The applicant is represented by Robert Kukowski <coughs> of West Haven Simpson Engineers Incorporated. My name is Proposed Lambert Street Access Road Site dated May 9 of 2023. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm going to recuse myself from any discussion or vote on this okay. proposed Thank entrance. You. So noted. It still leaves us with a uh, quorum, which is good. And, we are still up and everybody went to the site visit. That's, that's here. Okay. You know, Ryan excused himself from that too, so. Bukowski, Hi everyone, Rob Bukowski, Weston Sampson, representing Sankarfa, my colleague Jesse O'Donnell's with me tonight. Um, so just a little bit of history, um, the original project was approved with access off Brooks Drive, which is a little bit further to the east down Park Drive. Um, there was some issues in obtaining access to the site there, so what we're proposing tonight is to extend Lambert Road, or Lambert Street rather, which is an existing public road. Mm -hmm. um, so the extension would be about 320 feet long. Uh, there's a 40 foot right of way, and the street is about 30 feet wide. So the first 20 feet from the existing end of the asphalt would be paved. And we did consult with DPW on this, so we've got the town standards and what they like to see as far as pavement goes, um, and then it would be a 20-foot wide gravel road for about the next 300 feet. Um, 
there is a wetland area that's being impacted. It's 3,357 3, square feet of wetland. Um, we're proposing to replicate at one and a half times that, so 5,036 square feet. Uh, stormwater will, will be managed um, using a swale on the western side of the road and check dams to try to slow the water down. It'll be a grass swale to provide some treatment. Um, one of the things that we're proposing, and there's a, a detail I can share, but what we call is a, a rock sandwich. So when you get into the wetland, we use larger diameter stone that has bigger porosity, so it allows the water to pass through, so we're not basically blocking off the wetland. We're allowing it, allowing it to be maintained and connected. Um, that's pretty much it for uh, an overview of, of what we're proposing there. So that's the end of Lambert Street right there. Right. This is uh, March 27th of this year photograph. You're welcome to stand, stand on the side. Going in that way. Oh, yeah. Do you guys have the green cards? Yeah. I'm going to ask for a little history lesson. Um, tell me a little bit more about Brooks Drive and why the why the access can't happen there. Is, I, I've heard it's been proposed there, from Lambert back to Brooks, back to Lambert. So I'm curious as to what what that history is. Yeah, so I can provide a little overview, but um, Mike and Grant from Sincarfer are here as okay. well. So cool. Um, since that's a private drive, a private paper road, my understanding is that they needed permission. Okay. Um, that's it right there. From both the butters. And um, two lines. they weren't able to obtain our street. Okay. So there's a little more information to that. What it, I mean, I was involved in this um, working with the planning board. The proponent owns a portion of, of Brooks Drive. Um, it's either 12 or 16 feet. Uh, I thought it was 16 feet. It's when I, I think it's 20. It's, it's 20 feet. Yeah. So it's a it's a 40 foot wide. Okay. So they have 20 feet. 20. Right. But. What was being proposed to the planning board was a 16-foot road, and there was some talk about not being able to, you know, access that with construction equipment and all of those things. Um, and there's been a, a few, a few back and forth, you know, as as the chairman said, flipping back and forth from there to there. I contacted um, Mike Tuhill from Conoco, who's a, a wetlands consultant that we use on another project, and, and talked to him about this. Um, I was surprised that in the in the plans and, and application, it really didn't point out that um, Lambert Street was, wasn't just a driveway entrance, it's a driveway entrance to a previously permitted, you know, seven megawatt solar field. Um, and I felt that that was a little a little misleading to DEP that they didn't know they were approving two wetlands replications um, on the same piece of property. Well, so the um, the narrative of the NOI did reference the approved solar project. Barely, but but reading the the response from 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 DEP, um, they they missed the point that this is part of the same project. And they, they clearly say that, you know, if there's if there's more than 5,000 square feet, then you've got to get the 401 and, and go through all of those steps. Yeah, and, and we'll, we're planning on working with the Army so, Corps on that. So in talking to, to our consultant, um, his feeling is that you do have access um, on that road. It just doesn't, you know, completely fit, fit the need. And that moving to Lambert Street um, would be a segmentation of this and that he felt that because of the significant um, natural heritage endangered species, you know, mappings out there of rare, rare habitat, rare and endangered species, pictures from residents of spotted, tall, uh, spotted turtles and, and uh, maybe box turtles, spotted salamanders in, in large numbers, 
Um, it's his suggestion that the commission, and I'm just saying this, that his suggestion is that this project exhausts all of their remedies to use that road. And there's been discussion at the planning board of this would have to go to land court and go back and forth and go all through all of those things. So you would rather go to Lambert Street. But after being at Lambert Street on Saturday, um, I was taken back by the significance of, of what that wetland is. And looking at the um, NOI filing, you're talking about BBW, but you don't mention any bank. And there's clearly um, a carved out stream there. There's, you know, there's absolutely bank there that's going to be taken out. And, and the, the, the stormwater that comes through there looks like it's got quite a bit of velocity to it because it actually has you know, carved it up. Um, talking to, um, to Mike Tuhill, um, we need to know if this project went through MEPA. Um, did the project go through MEPA? Was it an EMF for this project? No, we didn't meet any of the thresholds. Well, we, we think that now you're, you're triggering some of that. So that, that's understandable, Pat, and that's separate, right? So we'll work with the Army Corps, we'll work with MEPA. We've already had discussions with Natural Heritage and talked to them about, you know, potential mitigation, even though the, this original site was approved prior to the new mapping. So we're, this is our first step, you know, and we fully intend to continue on with other state federal approvals that we need to get. But I'm, I'm concerned about um, approving this before we have all of the feedback from everybody and, and whether MEPA decides to, to say there is no um, filing required or an ENF or a single EIR or, or you know whatever goes there. But it would be unfair to, to carry this thing on for weeks and weeks and weeks on our agenda like has happened to us in the past. We advertise something, the public hearing gets continued for three or four or five months and people don't know when to come back to the meeting. Um, you know, they lose track of these things. So. So we, I mean, we've got a long road ahead of us as far as getting this permitted through some of these other agencies. So and, and that's why it would be better to, to, to go through those more complicated agencies and, and get those buy-offs. I mean, we don't have a letter um, here that you've, that you've contacted Natural Heritage and that you, you started that. So we can't take any action on this until you've heard from Natural Heritage. We, um, I intend to, to talk to Natural Heritage. Um, I'm going to recommend to the commission that we use our third party um, wetland specialist to, to go through these plans and review it and make his presentation to the commission as a professional on what steps he thinks this needs to go through for a regulatory process. Um, I, I've been out there for a long time <clears throat> and I, I used to want to fill everything in with dirt, but this is a one of the more significant wetland systems that I've, um, you know, walked into. Um, I even felt compelled to, you know, go to Sarah Quintal and ask, you know, her opinion. Mm -hmm. So, I just think he had too early. So, if if you want to have a, a peer reviewer look at the right one, we're fine with that. We can have our wetland scientists meet that person out there. I think yeah. we'd be okay with that. Yeah, we're completely okay with that. And you know, like Rob said, you know, this is. This doesn't end here. We've got a lot more permitting to do to get through this. So we're committed to doing that and working in. And that's why I think that we're premature. The, this is the, the problem that we have though, right? Where we know we've got to go through multiple agencies. So mm -hmm. if, if every agency takes the same stance that we want to be last, we don't go anywhere. So without your approval, we wouldn't bother going through those other steps. That's why we're here first. So we're having serious problems in town just from one 19-acre solar field that we went first. And, and as time went on, the plans that the commission approved got modified that went to the planning board, and the planning board didn't know they were different than what we approved. And then after the planning board, the plans for construction got sent to the building inspector for approval, and they were different than the plan <laughs> conservation approval that the planning board approved. So there's been a policy developed internal that all of the department heads are meeting on these projects and, and vetting them and, and that no one department can sign off unless everybody <coughs> signs off simultaneously. That, that's so, fine. I, I agree with that. I think that's fine from a local yeah, level. But, but what you're asking is we move forward with MEPA and we move forward with Natural Heritage and we move forward with the Army Corps 
before you're willing to approve it like I just why, why would we go through that effort if there's a chance that that you're not approving so again that's why we're here this is this is really our first step but everybody goes to the building goes to the planning department and goes to NEPA and says conservation already approved it and and that that you know carries a little bit of weight when you get to these regulatory agencies but we're approving something that we don't know what you're actually going to have to finally agree to or what kind of conditions are going to set and I did I did one of these projects. Um, there were 17 box turtles on the site, and we had to put GPS um, locators on the turtles, and we had to do turtle sweeps, and we had to do all these things. And that's, I, I don't know about the, the GPS part, but part well, of our discussion with Heritage was turtle sweeps. So even though the project is technically <coughs> grandfathered in before they redid the mapping, they would, they're reviewing this now, and I did get confirmation from it that, that they got it. So they're reviewing it now. We expect that part of their recommendation is going to be implementing implementation of a turtle protection plan and doing turtle sweeps prior to construction. And and based on on what I'm seeing um, in the field from the solar the solar developers and the engineers and the construction companies they're hiring, they lack the expertise to do this kind of work. And I'm, I'm very concerned that um, we wind up with another. Um, you know, nightmare up there, and dead turtles being <coughs> thrown in dumpsters, and, and all of this stuff. Um, I just think that you need a bigger buy-in from the other um, agencies. So, so we're on the agenda tomorrow night for the planning board um, for a couple things: extension of the special permit that was approved, and for this modification. So. That's tomorrow night. I, I don't know if we'll get approval tomorrow night, but we're, we're working, you know, closely. And those are the two boards, commissions in town that, you know, this is within their purview. So, I, I guess, I mean, we're always open to approvals with conditions. So, I guess my hope was that if if you find this an acceptable alternative, is that it could be approved with conditions that it be approved by planning board. We consult with MEPA. We consult with the Army Corps. We consult with Heritage. And you know we can report back and, and keep everybody in the loop. Whether it's just through documentation <coughs> or, or if it helps, we can come back in and present updates. I mean, we're we're happy to do all that. Can I? Yeah, I, actually, I want to ask a question. I yeah. want to go back a step. So, it sounds like there's been two different approvals for this, or there's been or two different proposals, like two different wetlands crossings. No, what's, that what's, was that was part of the history I was trying to get at, in terms of. So what it is, is years ago, you folks approved the, the project with some wetlands um, restoration in it. Okay. <coughs> they were going to use Brooks Avenue or whatever, Brooks, Brooks Street, whatever yeah. it is. And when that didn't pan out fast enough um, and, and hit the roadblocks, at the last minute, maybe a month ago, they decided to go to Lambert Street. Mm -hmm. But Lambert Street is part of the same piece of property. Right. And you're not allowed to segment um, wetland um, restoration between two different areas in one property, and because this is one piece of property, and, and this was brought up by one of the one of the residents, because this is and Mike Tugel as well, because this is one property, we're now trying to take over five thousand square feet of wetlands out and replicate. Is and that, that would oh, is that so? Maybe I'm not seeing everything on these plans here. <coughs> so you're saying these fields would be in two separate spots divided by a wetland? There's two, there's there's two separate wetland areas. Yes, okay. which which exceeds the 5,000 square feet. Okay. And then the other Can side of it. shown on this any better? I can't. I can't. The other side I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't able to go to the site visit Saturday. So the, the, the other, actually, I, I have a small sketch here that I can show you. One point, though, Bob, if you remember the letter we just got from National Heritage about non-compliance, mm -hmm. We, you should not issue a notice of intent until they've issued their approvals. Okay. So this was the, the one that was previously approved. Yeah. We'll have to see if that's good. The access. Yeah, this is the one on the right here. I know the new one is down here. So show me the, so where, where's the street just so I'm getting it. So it's down here. So you can sort of see it right here. So is this part drive right here? Yep, it is. And that would have been Brooks right. if that was yep. exactly. if you were given access. Exactly. Where is so you but you saw the fields are gonna be there. Yeah, there's three different areas. 
So without this, I mean, we've we've exhausted basically all access options. Mm -hmm. We looked at coming in off Cushnet Ave at, at the end of Park Drive. There's a gate and there's an Eversource easement that goes through um, Sincarfa's approach Eversource to try to get permission from them to use it, but. Uh, this is really the, the last alternative that we're left with to, to access. The so field. you're saying coming through Lambert, yep. Access this field here, and, and this, then this goes away, and then drive this. Yep, exactly. So then the segmentation happens because it's that that yeah. entrance from Lambert is is part of that same parcel. If you look at the if you look at the TV, well, mm -hmm. yeah. So where it says east of. That's mm -hmm. Lambert Street, where it goes into there. Those lines are um, an identification of rare wildlife habitat by natural heritage endangered species. And I'm not a fan of exemptions for something that was approved, you know, several years <coughs> ago, and then it was remapped. But Lambert Street and the Lambert Street taking of the wetlands was not approved years ago, or and is subject. To all this natural heritage stuff, and it's and it's not just that. It's it's also um, core habitat for rare species, and it's the entire site. And it, it is eastern box turtle. We've confirmed yeah. that with her. Yeah. yeah, and then and it sounds like there's one of pools in there. There's spotted salamanders. But we haven't we haven't been. And then this is priority habitat for rare species. Mm -hmm. So there's some elevated concern here, and this has been um, idle for a long time. Wildlife has moved back in, conditions have changed. It was, it was flagged, you know, two or three years ago. I understand that when the commission did their site visit um, for the initial notice of intent, that this actually had snow cover on it, and you couldn't see the wetlands. And that was a, a procedural, you know, error there. And I think that based on what's happened to our 19-acre solar field, this, this just deserves a, a fresh look at the wetlands, the flagging, the stormwater. Um, I went through the report today, and we'll let Rob get to that, but there's some significant um, issues with infiltration. You know, these are these are C&D soils, they're tight, oh, okay. and they can't infiltrate, and they say it in here. Um, so I, I think there's a lot to it. And keeping in mind that you've got 68 acres down the street for Deep Brook, mm -hmm. and then another 70-something um, for Morse's Lane, we're looking at almost 200 acres of, of clear-cutting alteration that was approved years ago mm -hmm. under a different right. way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. So right, I should ask if there's neighbors, anybody here that has questions or comments about the project. <laughs> And uh, to do so, because we're on TV, uh, we need to add your name and where you're from so you can I identify yourself. If anybody would like to ask. Mr. Chair, can I? Add yeah, please, Rob. I was just, I just, I want to make sure I know this kind of people in the audience a chance um, if they had a question. I, I just want to add one thing about the access road and, and sort of the reasoning here for submitting this as a, a, a standalone NOI is because. Since there's no other viable access to the site, regardless of the solar array, if the property owner wants to access this site, this is the only way to do it. And I guess that's one of the disagreements because they haven't exhausted their remedies to use um, Brooks Drive. It is 20 feet wide. We only acquire 16 feet um, road for all the other solar fields in town. That, that's been the standard we've developed we receive significant uh if you need to go to the podium though if you're going to talk right. yeah please yeah, I need your name. Yeah. <coughs> uh mike atkinson some car for solar uh we, we feel that we did exhaust um our ability to use brooks avenue um due to folks living on either side of the paper street um having significant concerns with uh vehicles using that road There's a lot of other remedies out there than just the you know residents saying they don't like it, but that that can be determined by the commission at a later date, and then we'll also have to see what the planning board does tomorrow night. Anybody else? Yeah, yes. Uh, 
My name is Mark Moore, and I live at 41 Park Drive, and I'm, at about, I'm one of the abutters of Brook Ave. Uh, it was mentioned that they have 16 or 20 feet uh, access. Uh, that's never been proven. Uh, there's no deed that states that uh, Mr. White owns any land in the first 200 feet off of Park Drive. Uh, we are, I'm in a butter on one side, and Dextra is in a butter on the other side. And since it's Paper Street, we both own to the center line of the street. <coughs> Mr. White does own property in back, but the first 200 feet is the dispute. Uh, clearly stated in a letter that my attorney submitted to the board at the last meeting on April 6th. And reading their letter from their attorney uh, for tomorrow's meeting, uh, he clearly talks about uh, the abutters in the legal rat ratifications, uh, but he does not mention anything about the two first 200 feet from Park Drive, uh, from Park <coughs> Drive past uh, to White Drive, which is behind my house, right? So. When people are saying they have rights to 16 or 20 feet, uh, that's up for debate. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so, I'd be asking that we continue this for more information so that we have some time. I mean, I was up the last five days. I mm. yeah. basically had today to look at all of this stuff. Mm. Get a copy of this out to Mike Tuhill. Um, get an estimate from him of, of what it makes it takes to look at it, and have him come to the next meeting and, and make his presentation. I, I, he's not an activist. He was very level-headed at, at the Keying project. Um, I thought he was very fair. So, yeah, I'm, I like that idea. Yeah. Agree. Agree. You'd need to like to do that, yeah. and you'd have to agree to it. And. So we do this to the, for the next next meeting then. Continue to the next meeting. Or is that Continue for, for information to the next yeah. meeting, but you may not have it. You may you not know, have it. Yeah. It's similar to the stormwater review. Yeah. So it might. I'm sure he's going to want to do a site visit. Mm -hmm. So it, it might take a couple of weeks, and we don't know what. Yeah, and then we'll also have her from planning too. Yes, planning goes tomorrow night. Right. So. So that fits into actually your schedule right right too. Can you? Because right? whatever the planning board yeah. does could influence yeah, what the commission yeah, does. Should continue to? Yeah. I think we're fine. Get more information. Yeah. I don't think we have to say next meeting because that might not happen. I'll second the motion to continue. Yeah. Do we want to put a date on this? Is the question? Yeah, I'd go to our second meeting. Two minutes from now. Two meetings from now, just so folks don't show up here thinking something's going to happen and we get into that guessing game. Isn't of that the twenty eighth? That's the twenty eighth. June twenty eighth. Yeah. Could we could we continue the next meeting and then just continue with that if we need to? Yeah, we, we would prefer to be on the next meeting. And we're we're trying to avoid having residents that are concerned about this have to show up when when we already know that there won't be resolution to this in just two weeks because this has to go to, to Mike Tuhill. He has to review it and give an estimate of what it's going to cost. He sends us a um, a contract. You folks send us a check. I sign the contract and the review starts. That's going to take a week. And then you have to a chance to respond to his comment, whether you agree or not, and then he'll respond to that, and hopefully all of that gets resolved and you both come in and make your presentation. Yeah, no, so I know. I understand thing. the process. I think we're just trying to move this along. I understand. But, but we're trying to do the right thing. Yeah. So we're as are we? Yes. Yeah. Well, excuse me. Ken Place on 160 Lake Street. Everyone had notice for this meeting, correct? You had all the green cards, all the return receipt. So all the neighbors, everyone up on had, and where are they today? That's all I'm saying. So why delay it for two meetings? <coughs> for the reasons that you said, because if we don't have the responses we need in two weeks, which is not, and that's likely to be the case, if we don't have the information we need to make that vote, I. Yeah, I, I'm more comfortable not having it on the agenda than just saying we're going to continue and you know, and you're all here. So it's not just the responses from people coming. That's part of it, but it's also scientific us, response. Yeah, it's okay, also us yeah. not knowing if we're going to have the info we need to make a decision. Yeah, so it isn't just and and maybe you know Weston and Sampson will hear from Natural Heritage 
before that and have something significant to forward the maybe short circuits the need for that I'm just saying we don't all we know is you you've talked to natural heritage we haven't we haven't seen anything we haven't seen your letter we can share the correspondence if you could just not talk from the audience that would be great because mm -hmm. we do our minutes based on what's at the podium so we'll we'll expedite as fast as we can if, if they want to come back in the next meeting yeah, it's up to you, Bob. Oh, sure. I think I think right, that we'll should be that. an option. Okay. I don't. So it's just three weeks, not two weeks. It's the 14th. Correct. It's in three weeks. June yeah. 14th. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's do that. Let's do that. It's three weeks. So, so Ricky, your motion is continued to June 14th yeah. for, for more information. Yeah, so moved. Yeah. There's a second from you, ever? 14th now. June 14th. Yes. June 14th. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Yeah, and I'd like to say, uh, could you, yeah, we yeah, need, uh, for the, you're, go, you're going to postpone it, then you don't have to, for, uh, for the record, Raymond Larvia, yeah. I live on Lucia Street, and of course, I got a, thank you, when, when you uh, continue, mm -hmm. you don't have to notify anybody. Correct, you have to watch for the agenda. Yeah, so that, that's the problem, you know, that's a big problem. Because the mailman wouldn't deliver this, he wouldn't get out of his truck on Saturday because it was raining and deliver it. I had to go to post office on Monday and get it. And he came. So there's you no know, five days, uh, you know. Can I can I tell him that you're 89 years old? <laughs> yes. Okay. So he's not right now. He's 89 years old. He doesn't have a computer. He doesn't have access to all these things. And he was concerned. No, I don't have. You know. There was there the letter that was sent out for the NOI. Um, no, <coughs> didn't have the time of the meeting, or or the date of the meeting. It said to call the call the conservation commission office, and get that information. Um, and Joanne looked, and, and some of our notices that the engineers send out have the date and time, and some don't. It really has to have the date and time. He, he was confused as, you know, when the hell is this meeting? But they also used one envelope to send out the notice for the planning board and this commission meeting, which confused it even more, because mm. he thought it was one meeting. So um, it's been a little disjointed on, on Sin Carfer's part of, of getting this out. and. Um, I don't know how he gets known yeah. if it gets continued again. So we have so to wait. Yeah. Let's yeah. continue. All right. They can check the website. Right. So, we're so, June 14, so June 14th, we're going to continue the meeting, too. So we're still and, in this discussion. vote on it. I think. Yeah, we're, we're still in the dis discussion phase of this motion. Yeah. Is your comment related it, to the motion? It's about the date and time of the meeting. Okay. We had not been given the date and time of the meeting by the time that we had to send out the notices. She had to run a newspaper ad. Uh, okay. So but from now on, I think uh, the information will be available. Like in this case, we know it's June 14th. Yeah. Okay. So, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 One recusal. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so let's continue. Okay, next. Um, Thank you. Uh, yes, Joanne. Is that you, Mr. Smith? Yes, Hi. I am. I don't know if you just want to tell them what can be discussed. I think you walked in after. Unfortunately, you were first on the agenda. Yeah. So. Is there, was there it, uh, any way to... Thank you. Push that back or address it now? It's a shame. We'll just it's let them not on everybody. Yeah, it was raining. Yeah. And I didn't see you make all this I was wondering. Yeah. 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 I, I did it for 36 years. Yeah. And I love my customers. Yeah. Anybody yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm the city. I'm the city. Oh, it's so city. So I'm not. We're trying to do that. We're trying to have one meeting. We need to move the conversation outside. But not all like that, okay? Okay. You're on camera, folks. Thank you. Mr. Smith, just to address your question um, so we voted not to extend the order of conditions no. uh, okay um, with uh, okay uh, would have hoped that you would have um, continued it um, 
so that I had a chance to, to discuss the project. Was there a reason where they were coming in? Was that? Yes. Well, it was for us on the agenda, and right. it didn't get here. But the basic reason for it is that there's been no activity on the site, and all of these solar fields are getting stale, and, and conditions are changing up there, and the, and the town, similar to the power company, you know, aggregating all of these applications, has taken a look at how we've handled these um, prior permits. And the town, you know, the vote from the commission was to, to deny the extension, but it doesn't prevent you from coming back and applying for a new notice of intent. Once you get a, a better idea of you're going to have a connection uh, and, you know, what's going on, there were houses built next to it, it kind of changes that, and there was a debate as to whether or not those new property owners needed to be notified, and the commission didn't know there were new property owners there until, you know, Saturday's site visit. So that was the vote. Uh, okay. Um, well, that obviously the book's in, in the record, but um, yeah. I, I but you're not precluded talk. from reapplying. Uh, yeah, yep, yep, yeah, I understand. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, motion to reopen a continued public hearing. Well, the motion we're going to close this one first. No, we, no, we, no, continue. we continue to continue. Yeah, I usually Motion to so we have a motion. So I make a motion to reopen. Got a second. Second. In favor. Aye. Aye. We have a continued public hearing. Stormwater issues. They ask Costello Park Drive and Deepbrook Drive, map 17, lots 66 through 84, map 18, lots 12 R, 12 S, 18, 18G. A stormwater permit application has been filed by Jose S. Costello for property located at Park Drive and Deep Brook Drive, map 17, lot 66 through 84, map 18, lots 12R, 12S, 18, 18G. The applicant proposes to construct approximately 2,350 feet of roadway with associated drainage and utility systems to serve a 15 lot residential subdivision. The applicant is represented by Jamie Bissonette of Zenith Consulting Engineers, LLC. My name is Deep Brook Estates, dated October 24 of 2017. Last time this was on the agenda, we continued because there was this ongoing discussion between um, peer review and Zenith, and that can that discussion still continues as each side is answering each other's questions. You saw my email this afternoon. Right. Yeah. And so you exchanged emails with Rainy Gagnon from Zenith, and I think the I think you said once they've once they've reached an agreement on all the things they can agree on. Yeah. Um, and, in, and in fairness to, to Beals and Thomas, they did get a pretty big response, you know, just last Friday. Um, so I think it'll be ready for the next meeting, right? you know, without any, any issues there, as long as the calculations prove out. Mm -hmm. So let's see what we hear from Beals and Thomas, but continue to the next meeting. For yeah, my yeah, my preference for everybody's time is that whatever has to get done during their work days gets done so when they present it to us yeah, it's, done, yeah. it's easier for us to analyze and respond and we don't need dueling engineers no um, it's not a good use, use of anybody's yeah. time yeah. Yeah. mr Costello, i don't know if you wanted to add anything otherwise we're just going to con continue as the engineers talk it over that's fine. Okay. that's fine thank you so that being said i'll entertain a motion to continue until our next meeting june 14th so moved we have a second Second. Any further discussion? In favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That's continued until June 14th. Uh, motion to open a public hearing. So for Thank you for coming. You're welcome. So do I, do I have a motion to open, open a different public hearing? So moved. We have a second. So accepted. Any in favor? Aye. 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 Public hearing, stormwater, Deterra Development, LLC, Bradford Street, map 15, lot 482. Stormwater permit application has been filed by Deterra Development for property located at Bradford Street, map 15, lot 482. The project description is for four new single family dwellings on a private way, Bradford Street, with a stormwater drainage basin. Stormwater drainage basin accounts for three previously built single family dwellings and Bradford Street roadway improvements. The applicant is represented by Jamie Bissonette of Zenith Consulting Engineers, LLC. Plan name is stormwater permit plan dated March 8, 2023. There's nobody here for this project. So we, we have not received the um, estimate from Bill. I have a call to Bill. He had been on vacation last week. 
So I expect the estimate and to get a check from Deterra next week and the peer review will start. So we'll continue this to the next meeting for what? It's gonna be a big meeting. Well, that's why we're here for a big meeting. Mm -hmm. We're a big commission. There's not much else to say on this project, so I'll entertain a motion to continue until June fourteenth. So moved. And a second. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, on to the discussion agenda. <coughs> Filing deadline and meeting schedule. Review of minutes and the votes may be taken. You're up, Joanne. All right, so uh, we received uh, some literature and spoken to about uh, mm -hmm. right. the Haven neighborhood news will not be able to advertise. Where's that letter from Beth? Oh, it's sitting right on top. July, I believe, right? Yeah, so from Beth David, Neighborhood News. As most of you know, we take a two-week publishing break in the summer. This year we will not publish on July 6 and July 13. Please keep this in mind when planning your legal notices. So if we don't publish on the 6th and we can't have a meeting on the 12th, Right. You could have discussion, but yeah, you wouldn't be able to discussion do anything that needed a public hearing, okay. like an advertisement. Yeah. Hmm. So any continued public hearings we couldn't do, COCs we could do or not. We do a yeah, but not advertisement. Right. Yep. So if something comes in, we could have a meeting, but if nothing comes in, you could push to the next. I think what you're looking for is what the mm -hmm. next advertising date would be. Right. So whatever was going to go on, well, I guess it would be what July 12th. Would, we'd have to have everything in by June 28th, right? Because that that previous Thursday, based on your note here, June 28th. Yeah, I don't have my notes. Oh yeah, I have. Let me see what I have. Move, move 28th deadline to July 5th or July 12th. If you want to extend so that June 28th deadline, so they can, so I can run the ad, because she's not going to add on those, this, that, those two weeks, the, the sixth and the thirteenth. So you can't do any, you can't June. run any ads. Of June. No, July. that's July. Oh, July. Okay. July. So I have you either could extend that deadline instead of the June 14th deadline, extend it out right to June 28th, and then you'd be able to meet. On the 26th with a hearings, hearing part. So we'd have a June 14, June 28 meeting, but nothing in July until the. Not, until not for new, not for new items. No, but a, a, a full meeting, when would we be able to have yeah. a full meeting? So we could have a July, July 12 meeting of discussion COC. And meeting, whatever else is still meeting, in the right. meeting mail. Yep. Brooke. Those are public hearings, though. Yeah, oh. yeah they're still, yeah. That's po the Brooks oh, but they've been advertised already. Yeah, yeah. They, they're not yeah, posted they're advertised. You, you, you it's just new advertisements. advertisements. Right. Yeah, so it doesn't, new it doesn't affect our existing. Um, it would just agenda. be for new filings. So, 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 so I'd recommend that you don't accept any new filings until we come back on to advertising time. So either you move that deadline out to the 28th or to the 5th. You know what I'm saying? I yeah, you so probably moving on to the furthest date, Joanne. Right. So, in other words, the next that deadline would have been the 28th, the July 12th meeting. I know, but she's taking a break in July. Right, and then so so he you would have to move this deadline out. If if you move the deadline out to the 28th, then I can advertise for the July 26th meeting. Okay. However, they want to do it. So I mean, you want to give the applicant more time, or do you want to cut them off? And in case I have a, quite a few, you'll have a larger meeting for new. Just do new submittals for the 28th. We're not exactly set the world on fire for talking June, June 20th. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, so the cutoff date. Or, yeah, you so can, or you can make a new date of July 5th, which would be the day after uh, the Independence Day holiday. That would be the filing deadline for the 26th, which would be your first. Do we have that day off? No, we have the July 4th day off. So, so the Wednesday, we're going to come so back. So the 4th is not on the weekend, okay. Yeah. So you could make it the 5th. Right? You could make it your deadline the 5th. For the and July 26th. Correct. Yeah. Because she'll like be back. That'll be fine. That makes sense? Yep. <laughs> <Love>. Perfect. <laughs> That's why I gotta have it all in writing. 
Find a meeting. Yeah, and we can still do a July 12 meeting. You could. Yeah. Of yeah. whatever's already been either already been advertised once. Yes. Or discussion meeting mails. Information back, all those things. Right. Yeah. Okay. But just moving the deadline out right. so I can. Well, let's hope we get a lot of stuff done on the 12th because I'll still be out in Washington on July 26, so I won't be here for that one. Okay. Okay, so you want to move the date to the 5th? Yes. July 5th? Okay. Yep. I'll put that on the website. I'll have uh, time to put it on the website. Um, so everybody yeah, can just be a aware. heads up so everybody knows. Right. Everybody can be aware. Yep. This is ample yes. time in advance. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other discussion items? So we'll there's anything written, but anything else to add to that? Um, Wouldn't want to ruin a good meeting. <laughs> Asian updates, then, yeah. Nothing. Um, I guess what I'll throw out there, yeah, I can end the discussion or whatever. Um, so now, just so everybody knows, I think I mentioned this via email that for each of these meetings now, Joanne has to send in a request directly to town administrator for overtime. And so that's a new process. And I talked to her about doing that today. Okay. I mean, she's behind it. You know, things are off the wall. Mm -hmm. Just send the email and tell me you yeah. need to work three hours all the time. Yep. And if he doesn't answer it, we should just assume that it was approved. Who's he? Town administrator. Mm -hmm. We just approved the minutes from March, so she's got yeah. some catching up to do. So it's and the worse it gets, the harder it gets. Just it, it is a tad. Mm -hmm. yeah. so I stopped in there last Thursday and I saw what Joanne had going on, so yeah. I don't need and then any I'm on explanation. Vacation next week. Yeah, and then I have another yeah, vacation week in June. So. These are all those, that, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's been a good, yeah. you know. But just everybody knows that's that's all this. Right. I think you wrote back saying that the, the any scheduled meetings the overtime was fine, but I need additional, and it's not coming out of WPA still. It's, it's still, still not doing budget, it. and, and I don't understand why, but I, I don't know. If we can get an answer to why it's and, not. And, and just so you know, there is the discussion going on between. The, the steel workers union and the town administrator that you know this is a violation of taking that authority away from the department head and they negotiated an agreement with asked me that basically said that they had to make all of these reports to the town administrator rather than their um, department head but under the labor um, law once we were recognized as a union the town can't change anything can't change any responsibilities, can't change our hours, can't change our pay, can't change anything until we have a collective bargaining agreement signed. And anything that they want to change would be in that collective bargaining agreement. So um, I'm, I'm acquiescing on her doing that. I told her not to notify Jamie. And I got a letter from Jamie, you know, telling me I was confused and didn't know what I was doing. And, um, I haven't bothered to respond to it. We're just going to, you know, go ahead with our negotiations. And, but She's a she's a pawn in the in the whole thing. I did about past meeting minutes and remember everyone made the motion to approve I mean it was Heidi to three hours. Over, three hours of overtime for every meeting yes. night. Yeah. So we as a board support it. They even questioned her attending the meetings uh, recently. Yeah, I don't think the three the three hours was an addition to if I had a meeting week. It right. was to get caught oh, up. It was to course, get caught up. Of course. Right, yeah. right, right. I mean, I told them that the meetings basically, some of them have lasted three hours. At least two. They wanted an estimate of yeah. what we had anticipated. But also we talked today is that on time meeting time. days, Joanne needs to be in the office all day on meeting days. Mm -hmm. Or she needs to work a couple of overtime, hours of overtime the night before the meeting day because there's a lot to pull this all together. Stuff still comes in late. Yeah, you get emails bigger, all day and, bigger, and I'm in and the bigger. other office and, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. it's difficult and there's a lot of just emails going back there's a lot of questions being asked well, you know we have a new chairman of the board of selectmen and he was always engaged as i remember when he was board chairman of the board of selectmen before and i look forward to him rectifying some of these things he, he gets it done so yeah and i'm curious if the city of this town will do as they said when you were hired as a part-time agent to give us a full-time clerk yes and that should happen so yes. That will happen. All right. Um, I have one thing I'd like to say. Um, I sent an email today to Pam Labonte, our mm -hmm. town clerk, 
um, because I wanted her to know that at our meeting tonight, even though um, I live on Park Drive that's connected to Lambert Street, mm -hmm. that I feel, you know, I'm not in a butter, but I feel um, that I that I could vote confidently mm -hmm. and, um, you know, about the situation and fairly. So she said fine, but her response was to make sure that I filed this information with um, ConCon this evening. Sure. So I printed out a letter for all of you of the email of um, Pam and I's correspondence. Okay. So she's got one, I have one, and I want you all to have one. That way, if things get contentious, no one can say you live on Park Drive and didn't tell us. Yeah, and, you know. yeah exactly. So it's a disclosure. And then we're about to adjourn. However, I see Mr. Smith has returned, so I will give you the opportunity to speak if you'd like. I appreciate it. Um, so what, I, what I'd like to say is, given that the 251 Mendel meeting was not a public hearing and didn't have a specific time attached to it, I would like to request, respectfully request that the, the commission um, consider rescinding their previous vote to deny the uh, extension, given that, and, and continue, rather, so that we can better flush out um, kind of the, the conditions of the, the extension request, right? We can provide information, more information to show that it's a good cause extension. There's nothing kind of in our power to be able to build this project prior to the, the extension deadline. Um, it's completely out of our hands with the utility interconnection studies um, to be able to, you know, power this thing up. We've done everything that we can. so. Again, given that, I think it's within the Commission's purview to rescind that vote and continue. Again, because one key piece of this, right, Pat, it's not as easy as reapplying, right? This is years and millions of dollars into this project, and by reapplying, it basically provides, you know, it introduces a, a lot of risk to the project because the Commission may decide to deny the project. So what I'm would like to avoid for everyone's part is, you know, is litigation basically because just simply refiling uh, opens up that that uncertainty and risk to the project that I, I don't so believe my company will. So to your question on the agenda, the agenda is properly posted in accordance with open meeting. Uh, we don't put times on the hearings because if a hearing ends sooner, then we have to sit here idle waiting for that time. So it's incumbent upon the applicant to show up at 6 o'clock, see where you are on the agenda, and, and be here for it. I don't know that. With all due respect, this was not a, this was not a hearing. This was, this was not a public hearing. It was not noticed by the, by, uh, you know, to the buyers. It, it was publicly posted. It was, it was duly posted as a, as a public meeting. We don't put times on them. And, but that's, you know, I don't vote. It's, mm -hmm. it's up to you. But mm -hmm. the reasons haven't changed. Of, of why the commission made that decision. We're having problems where all of these sites were, were permitted and flagged and inspected and all things years ago. Things have changed. Um, conditions may have changed on the job. And um, my recommendation is that it not be, recomm uh, not be extended um, for the reason that we need a better look at all of these projects. And like you said, the power company has been overcome with all of these applications and has decided to change the way they look at it. So um, we have a project in town that was delineated um, two and a half years ago. Commission went out for a site visit and found an undisclosed wetland in the middle of their project. And they claimed that because it was um, flagged you know, two and a half years ago, we don't have the right to um, have jurisdiction over that wetland, and we do. And I don't want to see the same thing happen. And, and everyone that's coming in is threatening litigation and you know hell and damnation. And um, you know it is what it is. Everybody did this on, on speculation, jumping in thinking they were going to get connections. And it's not fair to hold us um, and the environment hostage for another year or two years or whatever and and you know the commission could could um someone i don't know if you could make a motion to reconsider um but we'd have to check with um someone on that but if you if you were to I have this reconsidered the commission um 
doesn't have to continue it for more than you know a certain amount of days. So it would be six months, one year. You know, um, it, it's all just too suggestive, and too many things have changed in town, and we're we're seeing major impacts. And I understand, and I guess what I would request tonight is not necessarily an extension or not a continuance of the permit, just a continuance of this discussion to better understand what the concerns are, if they're, you know, if there mm -hmm. can be anything, uh, at, you know, done to, to, to make sure that the project done um, correctly, you know, rather than just completely. I can check with town council tomorrow and see if this can be reconsidered, but I wouldn't want the commission to make an improper vote tonight and have them leave the impression that we took a vote and, and that complicates it even more of you took a vote and, mm -hmm. you know, dear judge, this is what happened. You can ask Tom, Tom Gonzal. Um, yep, I will, I'll, I'll text him on the way home tonight. Mm -hmm. And um, we would have to share, I mean, we're doing this open and open meeting, so this would have to be on the agenda for our next meeting for this discussion and what town council had to say. And that's the 14th, right? Yeah. Yeah. You've got to do that. It's not going to change my vote, but other commission members may feel differently. Well, you can decide not to do it. That would no. But, you know, just I'm, in, in... I'm hearing a request from w at least one member to do that, so let's okay. find out. Yeah. And then we can vote on it at the next, the next meeting. All right. I'm not going to shut down other commission members because they might feel differently than I do. Yeah. We, we didn't, you know... I get it. Yeah. I'm good. Fair enough. That's all I ask. Yeah, that would okay. be great. An additional discussion on the 14th. Yeah. So meet sometime on the 14th to, to talk. If Tom so Council it. says it's okay. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Which he's going to text on the way home. Okay. Okay, great. <laughs> and he's very accessible. Yeah. I, so I, you <laughs> probably I believe me. So, so, you'll, <laughs> so I'm sure you'll have an answer whether that, that's a possibility well before June 14th. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. Like I said, I, I appreciate whatever you can do. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be careful all the way back to the end for now. Yes. That's all right. Yeah, that's where he's headed. Thanks. And he came Saturday, too. For five minutes. Yeah. He was late for the site visit, too. It's not a good drive. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's a hell of a drive, uh, really. Yeah, it's 100 more than me. Mm. Wow. But he's getting paid for it. Yes. Okay. Uh, next, our next meeting is scheduled for June 4th. I should ask any other business for the commission, for members of the commission. Nope. nope. Our next meeting is scheduled for June 14. On time, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. And a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.